Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm GB and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you all the puzzles I received for the month of August. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is one of the biggest puzzle hauls that has been on this channel, uh, but I think there's a really fun and interesting and of course colorful mix of puzzles here. Uh, we've got all different brands, a whole bunch of different artists and yeah, just a lot of really beautiful, uh, interesting puzzles that I'm excited to share with you. So I think this is going to take us quite a bit of time to get through. So maybe get yourself a drink, get a snack, get comfy and let's go through all these puzzles. Before we go through the millions of puzzles for this whole video, I just want to let you know about a couple of changes that I've made that you'll see in this video. So the first is that I've actually decided to group the puzzles based on the puzzle brand. Um, normally what I've been doing is uh, grouping them based on the places that they came from, but I think it might make a bit more sense doing it this way. And then the second change is that you might notice I'm a bit off to one side for a lot of this video, and that's just so I can increase the size of the images that I pop in this sort of area here. Um, you know, I've just been sort of thinking about that for a bit and also based on some viewer feedback, especially from viewers who watch the videos on phones, mm. they've been finding it a little bit tricky to sort of see the detail in the images. So yeah, I'm going to see how those changes go. Of course, please let me know if you've got any feedback on that, um, you know, pop that in the comments below. The first stack of puzzles that I'm about to go through are all from the New York Puzzle Company and they all happen to be by the artist Janet Hill. I've actually quite admired her work for quite some time. I've had a lot of these puzzles on my wish list, but they only turned up in Australia recently. So of course I uh, jumped at the chance to get a hold of some. There were even some new designs I hadn't seen before, so I'm very happy about that. But yes, I did lose my mind a little bit. Um, so if you haven't seen her artwork before, it's very whimsical, a little bit fantasy, a little bit surreal. It's all done in this sort of painterly style. And I feel like a lot of the kind of color palette and even characters are almost a little bit of a throwback or inspired by vintage and maybe sort of 1940s, 50s kind of era. There's a lot of you know, muted colors and teals and things and, and even just like the hairstyles and clothing and things like that of the characters. So I guess uh, let's look at the first one. Um, so this one is called Breakfast in Bed and it's 500 pieces. And yes, yeah, this this lady sitting in bed enjoying, I guess, a nice big cup of coffee. And yeah, she has beautifully styled hair. Like I said, it looks quite vintage, like maybe 40s or something like that, maybe even 30s. And yeah, there's a lot of teal and sort of chartreuse greens and these beautiful pops of reds. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Amelie, but it really like reminds me, even this sort of, I guess, character reminds me a lot of that. And the color scheme in that is very like, makes me think of these puzzles as well. You, you'll probably see throughout a lot of her puzzles that a lot of the same colors are sort of repeated or used a lot. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's quite a painterly style. And yeah, she's in this very luxurious, uh, very, yeah, fancy looking bed, has this, these beautiful sort of curtains above it. And I guess I'm imagining the bed head behind her as like velvet or something like that. And yeah, it looks huge. I mean, I guess when you have a lot of cats, you do need a big bed. But yeah, she's just sort of uh, relaxing in her bed uh, with four of her cats, no, five, I think. And yeah, they're all just chilling and she's got a tray with breakfast items on and some flowers. And it looks like some of the cats are enjoying bowls of milk. And yeah, it's got like an old telephone there. And so I guess she's sort of just getting started for the day in a very relaxed manner with her, her fancy cats. So very cute. And then this next one is called Sand Shark Bar. It's also 500 pieces. And this one's a bit more of a brighter color scheme. I mean, I guess it is at the beach. So it's beautiful blue sky, sand, and then it's got this very quirky, uh, like I guess a little cocktail drinks bar. That's the shape of, you know, a shark's head and mouth open. Um, and then, yeah, all the people, in it sort of they are looking a little bit vintage as well like this lady's here here has like a sort of older style swimsuit on and yeah and maybe this lady down here as well and yes yeah, just people enjoying the beach chilling at this bar building weird uh sand shark castles maybe reading books and looks like someone got stuck in the sand but yeah looks looks like a fun day out at the beach wouldn't mind visiting this little shark bar and having a cocktail looks fun so yeah, I think that's a cute one as well. And then we have another 500 piece one here. This one's called Poolside. And um, I guess it's also a bit of a 
summery kind of vacation feeling one because this one's at you know someone's pool I guess um, and you know it's got some I guess it kind of makes me think like it could be Palm Springs or California I don't know somewhere a bit tropical um, but yeah it's got this high wall and obviously looks like a nice bright sunny day there's these sort of plants they're not palms they look like maybe some sort of succulent or cactus so that's why I'm sort of thinking like could it be out in California somewhere maybe and then there's a cute little squirrel up here just chilling but the I guess really quirky thing is that the people who are enjoying the pool and you know sunbathing and that seem to be showgirls like you know Las Vegas showgirls who knows maybe this is even in Las Vegas um, but yeah, it's quite weird. Uh, they just look like they're sitting there. There's like a sort of older vintage style little sun chair. There's pool floaties, a ball. Uh, this lady's got a little radio here and yeah, just looks very relaxed. And like I said, very whimsical, kind of a bit of a weird surreal style, but yeah, very pretty. And then we have another very cute one. This one's 1000 pieces and it's called Miss Moon's Bike and actually a very lovely friend of mine gifted this one to me. So thank you to her. I really love it. I think it's super cute. And yeah, it's this lady who looks like she's maybe almost like a governess or something. She's sort of dressed in this long sleeve and long black dress, but she's riding this very uh, unusual long bike with her dogs. Um, yeah oh and a monkey apparently i didn't notice that before there's a lot of cute little details in these and very yeah things that i guess yeah you don't even notice straight away you sort of uh see them as you the more and more you look at this but yeah all the dogs are just i think they're all on the same bike it looks like it it's a sort of weird mechanical all sorts of weird mechanics going on um but yeah they're all riding it except for this little one which is in her basket and all of them, except that one, have their helmets on, including her. So, you know, safety first. And yeah, it looks like they're just riding through a nice park or garden area. So very cute, very weird and silly, but I like it. Uh, next, we have one that is very much my kind of thing. Uh, this is 1000 Pieces and it's called the Cat Countess. And um, it's a pretty weird image. It's just this lady who's holding this gigantuan umbrella in the rain and like all on her and under the umbrella it's just filled with cats and I I don't even know if she realizes there's cats there she sort of looks a bit aloof maybe or you know just another day walking with my cats I don't know it's pretty weird the cats are really cute some of them have cute little bows and collars one has a funny little hat all sorts of cats and yep you know I guess as a, a crazy cat lady myself, this is the dream. These are my goals. <laughs> Not really, but it is. it does look like a lot of fun. So yeah, that's pretty weird. I hadn't seen that design before, but when I did, I was like, absolutely, this has to enter the collection. <laughs> um, I've just got a couple more from this brand. And then this next one is called House Plants and it's also 1000 pieces. And I think this one's just a really lovely I don't know it's probably less quirky than some of the others it's just really beautiful I thought so yeah another one where a lady's sort of just relaxing I guess with her breakfast in the morning in bed and yeah she's just sort of reading the newspaper and next to her is this beautiful Dalmatian dog um, and it looks like they're just chilling maybe it's a weekend or something she's got her record player here so it looks like they're listening to some music she's got like coffee and some like grapefruit and stuff and then um, I mean, it's called house plants, and I think it's because of the wallpaper here. It's got all these beautiful little, I guess, yeah, house plants or different plants in pots that are just sort of on the wallpaper. So, as someone who uh, likes quirky wallpaper, this one really appeals to me. I'm like, I kind of want that wallpaper myself. It looks really cool. Um, but yeah, it's just a really lovely image. I guess it's a little weird, but yeah, I just thought it's just beautifully done. And she almost has a bit of a 60s hairdo, I think. But yeah, really like this one too. And then the last one from New York Puzzle Company is called Mermaid Fountain and it is 1000 pieces. And at first glance, it looks all very normal, this beautiful fountain, people enjoying it as in, a, in this lovely garden. But then you realize, like the name suggests, there's a whole bunch of mermaids and they're all just, you know, splashing around, having fun in the different parts of the fountain. And then, so that's pretty weird, I guess. And then you've got here like a girl and I guess maybe like, you know, a friend or a mum and 
her Dalmatian. Maybe it's even the same lady or girl from the previous puzzle since she does have a Dalmatian. But it actually, even though this is sort of very, she's dressed quite in a vintage way and all the puzzles so far have been having very like kind of vintage characters. She looks like she's got a phone and she's taking a selfie in front of the mermaid fountain. So that's pretty interesting. It's a little hard to see, but I think that's what's going on. So that's pretty weird, um, but cool. So yeah, I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun doing all of these Janet Hill puzzles. They all just look really gorgeous, are pretty whimsical, pretty weird, quite different to anything I own. So yeah, I think they're gonna be yeah good fun to put together. Uh, all the puzzles in the next pile are from Gallison, except I think one that's from Mud Puppy, but I'm pretty sure Mud Puppy is part of Gallison, although let me know if that isn't correct. And I actually have a bit of a love-hate relationship with Gallison. I've sort of spoken about this before. I really love their artwork and designs. Like I just think they're beautiful and they work with some really great artists, but I'm just not a fan of their piece quality. I seem to have encountered uh, a lot of damaged and sort of inconsistent pieces in their puzzles and I'm just not a fan of like the white paper backing and sort of the glossiness and sometimes the fit of their pieces so yeah not the fan not the biggest fan of that but you know can't seem to resist their designs and this is why I'm a big sucker because uh yeah this is the case with this stack that a lot of these I think are fairly new designs and I just could not resist them and despite my issues with the quality I just you know still felt like I had to have these so let's have a look at the ones I got. So this first one is very cute and colorful. It's called I Love My Hair by the artist Andrea Pippins and it's a 500 piece puzzle and it's square. I'm pretty sure all or a lot of their 500 pieces seem to be square shaped. I don't know why, they just seem to do it like that. Um, anyway, this one is very bright and cute. It's this sort of very busy image of all these different like hair tools, accessories, products. You've got combs, straighteners, hair clips, scissors, and then you got like shampoo and hair balm and uh, coily cream oil and yeah, all sorts of things like what else? Ultra wash and leave-in conditioner and stuff. And then all amongst that, it's quite a lively, busy image because there's all little like doodles and like swirly things and stars and colorful little patterns sort of all in between the different items. So yeah, it's a very jam-packed, fun, lively, colorful image. So I think this one's gonna be a lot of fun to put together. I'm excited to do this one. And then next one we have sort of a similar thing because it's actually by the same artist. So it's also called I Love My Hair and it's by Andrea Pippins and it's 500 pieces. But the difference with this one is that it says it contains 15 shaped pieces. So I'm like, that's pretty cool and exciting. I have seen that in some of their other puzzles before, like a couple others, but I've never actually tried one. So yeah, I'm really interested to see what it's like. But apart from that, uh, you can probably see why I chose this puzzle. It's really pretty, gorgeous colors and patterns and design. Um, yeah, the color palette's beautiful. These hot pinks and fuchsias, teals, you know, chartreuse, bright yellows and oranges and things. Yeah, it's really bright and colorful, my, my sort of thing. And it has all this intricate sort of line work of, it's got these women with like all different hair styles or types of hair. And it's all just, you know, flowing amongst all these little plants like vines and leaves and flowers. And then there's a few little hair accessories, combs and what else, uh, like hair dryer and a ribbon. And yeah, it's really like this one, very jam packed, filled to the brim with little patterns and details. It's really, really pretty. And yeah, so I'm excited to do this one too and try out these cute little, I guess, whimsy shapes. And then next we have another quite colorful, fun looking puzzle. This one's called Mixtape Afternoon and 500 Pieces and it's by the artist Tabitha Brown. And just, yeah, it looks really fun. It's this girl or young woman who seems to just be having a chill, I guess, afternoon. And she's got her headphones on. I mean, it sort of looks like it's set in the 80s and 90s or inspired by that because you've got these big chunky headphones and cassette tapes and like a tape deck boom box here. And yeah, she's just sort of sitting, I guess, in her house amongst her plants, enjoying a drink. Um, and I guess just going through all her mixtapes. And they're definitely mixtapes because they have like, you know, different titles like love songs and you and me mix and party time lo-fi sounds, mellow, summer drive. So 
yeah, it looks really fun. So looks like a pretty cool, relaxing afternoon. So yeah, and I really like, yeah, like I said, the colors in this one, but also these sort of, the style of this has some really nice, big, bold sort of shapes and things. Like there's little details here and there, but a lot of it's just overlapping, like especially up here with the plants of these like, yeah, bold leaf designs and things. But yeah, it's quite a cool style. And then next we have a very, another very busy sort of intricate and detailed puzzle. So this one's called Succulent Mosaic, 500 pieces, and it's by, okay, I'm probably gonna not pronounce this correctly, um, Miyacharo, Miyacaro, I apologize. But it's a very beautiful image, and this puzzle is a little bit special. It's actually gold foil, so you might be able to see, but a lot of the line work, instead of just being black or white, it's gold foil. So I think this is gonna be a very pretty puzzle to do. But yeah, it features um, all these yeah, succulents, cactus, uh, all different little plants and leaves. Yeah, it's very jam-packed, there's some flowers and things. And it's a very pretty color palette too. Like it's, it's not exactly pastel, but it's a bit more muted. Um, these sort of, you know, dustier pinks and cornflower blues and like bright greens, but they're not neon, I guess. And yeah, very, very pretty. Um, I think this is gonna just look lovely when it's done. And then we've got one here that is definitely not very pink and bright. So it's kind of almost not quite me, but I still found it very pretty. Uh, this one's called Desert Avian Friends and it's 1000 pieces. And who is this by? Um, Janine Ziatkus, again, I apologize. Uh, but yeah, it's this very lovely, image of these, I guess, cute little birdies that are just chilling in the desert on these cactus plants. And yeah, they just have these lovely sort of patterned feathers and there's a lot of nice patterns going on in the cactus plants. Um, but yeah, there's like, you know, not just the birds, but there's like this owl up here, butterflies, some other little insects. Yeah, it's really pretty. Um, yeah, I just like the style. I just thought it was just a very nice image and would be quite fun to do, looks relaxing. So yeah, even though it's not bright and crazy like some of these other ones, I still think it's just a really nice image. So yeah, excited to get this one. And then we have this one here, which is quite, I guess, more like these ones, more probably my usual style. Um, and this one's called The Perfect Piece, 1000 Pieces. And I think this is by same artist who did mixtape afternoon. So it's by, yeah, Tabitha Brown. So you can probably tell they, uh, these two have the same style because it's by the same artist. Um, and yeah, I like her style. I think it looks really cool. Um, so again, a lot of like sort of bold colors and simple shapes in some ways, actually more simplistic because here you don't have a lot of detail of the face of these two women like you did with the other puzzle. Um, but yes, clearly this puzzle shows women who have distinguished taste because, you know, well, one, they're very colorful and bright. They have a cat and they're doing a puzzle. So clearly, you know, good taste here. Um, I can relate, <laughs> just kidding. Um, but yeah, it's really fun. You know, uh, they're obviously having a really relaxing, enjoyable time. The cat's enjoying hanging out with them. Um, and it's a sort of interesting image because it has these bold, bright, simple shapes here, but then in the background, there's a lot of like more detailed, I guess, fussier type of illustration. So we've got these, like their wall hangings, they've got like little more illustrated plants and butterflies and things. And yeah, it's quite detailed, it's very different. Um, and they're obviously, as well as being crazy puzzle and cat ladies, they're crazy plant ladies too, because they've got all these plants surrounding them and pictures of plants and things. But I was almost going to say they're like enjoying a nice cup of tea or coffee, but I actually realized like a lot of these teacups and stuff actually have plants growing out of them. So I guess they've just sort of started growing plants in whatever they can get a hold of. Uh, maybe, maybe that one's a cup of coffee. I'm not sure. But yeah, it looks fun. It's quite a just, yeah, cool image. I really like it. And then the last one from this stack is the one that's from Mud Puppy. It's a very teeny tiny puzzle. It's 48 pieces and it's called Tokyo Mini Puzzle. Um, I somehow missed that it was a mini puzzle. I knew it was 48 pieces, but in my head, I guess when I was looking on Amazon at it, it looked bigger. <laughs> so when I got it, I was a bit 
surprised. I was like, oh, it's really tiny. Oh, because it says it's mini. So uh, read things before you buy them. But I definitely have no regrets. I think it's super cute. Um, and I picked it because of the really adorable image. So I really love all things Japan and Tokyo. I've been to Tokyo a few times, really love it. And so I thought this was just a really fun sort of, uh, you know, representation or interpretation of it. And so, yeah, it's just this cute little jam packed image. Again, very sort of simplistic, colorful, bold designs by a different artist. So this one is by Erica Harrison. Um, and yeah, basically there's like Mount Fuji, the Shinkansen or bullet train. We've got some like temples, shrines, castles. We've got, I think what is Tokyo Tower. Um, there's someone in a kimono. There's some sushi. We've got like some little signs, like neon signs from sort of nightlife districts. Yeah, it's really cute. Um, not exactly sure how big it is. It does have like the size on the back, which is 20 by 14 and a half centimeters. Um, I'll put the inches on the screen. Um, wait, what, how big is that? Oh, I don't know. I can't imagine that as an actual size, but I guess it's still going to be pretty small if it's going to all fit in here. Uh, yeah, so I think that one's really cute. Uh, even the packaging is quite cute. It's got a little, you know, welcome Maneki Neko cat here and the colors are really nice. And yeah, it's my first time trying one of these. So it's gonna be interesting to see what the pieces and stuff are like. I mean, I'm not expecting the highest quality or anything. It's just a cute little puzzle. I think it's just for kids, but you know, it could be a fun little one to have on your desk or something like that. So yeah, anyway, I think, uh, you know, I got some really fun ones from Gallison, a lot of very bright, colorful ones. Of course, they're all beautiful as pretty much all Gallison images are. Um, so yeah, so let's look at the next pile of puzzles. There's a few different brands here in this pile. Uh, let's go through the first one. So these four are all from Soonus and they're all uh, PMP or pick and pre-order puzzles from the most recent event, which was back in June, I believe. And so these are the four that got four designs that got made into puzzles. So I actually made a video on this really recently. I'll pop that up in the cards. So I won't go into too much detail with these. Um, this first one is called uh, Treasure Hunters by the artist Frenemy. So each one's by a different artist. Um, so the front just has a section of the image, but the full image is on the back. But yeah, it's this really bright, colorful sort of fantasy like image or land. It's got all these uh, quirky, whimsical, cute little monsters and critters and a ghost and yeah, like a snake, all sorts of weird stuff. And yeah, I guess they're all a bit of a group of friends or yeah, who are on a treasure hunt. And it looks like they have found their treasure. There's like a cute uh, treasure chest that's opened up and what looks like some sort of magic coming out with a cute face on it. But yeah, everything's very like uh, pretty like weird and wonderful and quirky yeah love the colors i think all the characters look really fun and cute and i haven't done this one yet but i am hoping to do it soon and i'm pretty excited to do it because i just think the artwork is pretty fabulous and then next is another one that i'm excited to do haven't done it so this one is also very colorful and has a lot of cool stuff going on in it too so this one's called supermarket by the artist row one and yeah, it's this uh, girl who's just browsing the snack section in the supermarket, all the chips and biscuits and I guess even cereals and stuff. And yeah, it looks like she's just, you know, having a bit of trouble deciding on what snacks to get. I can definitely relate. Um, but yeah, I love all the colors and details and all the teeny weeny little images and text on all of the pack like packaging. It's yeah, really detailed and yeah, really cute. And then um, even, in the corner of the image is like this very cute little naughty looking cat who sort of um, I think has picked up some candy along the way but seems to be dropping it all on the floor so yeah but yeah I think this one's really cool and I'm um, looking forward to doing this one soon as well and then this next one I did recently and I think it's this one's very me um, kind of matches a lot of the colorful rainbow puzzles in the background uh, so it's very color very colorful and it's called Good Vibes Only, and it's by the artist Humberto Cruz. And yeah, it's just all this really cute, um, very cheerful looking little characters and things going on. So it says Good Vibes Only in the middle. Um, and then there's just all these cute little things like clouds and rainbows, cats, 
tigers, ladybugs, suns, little love hearts with happy smiling faces. Yeah, it's just very cheery, very happy. I really enjoyed this one. Um, I also forgot to mention that the quality on these is very high and it's really nice and uh, out of these puzzles so far I haven't experienced any false fits and yeah really yeah really love the quality of these so have very much been enjoying putting together beautiful feeling puzzles but with beautiful artwork as well so yeah win-win um, but yeah just, this is just such an adorable image so you know how could I resist doing this one so yeah really love that and then the last one from Soonness is the one that you can see me do in the video. Um, so it's quite a different style and a lot less colorful actually than the others. Um, so this one is called Gone Coastal by the artist Kathy Ager. And yeah, it's a very uh, much more restricted color palette. Uh, you know, these sort of, the blues are still very bright, but yeah, these sort of sky blues and then this black and gray kind of stone archway or window. But yeah, it's quite an interesting image. It's very hyper, hyper realistic. It sees like Nike sneakers hanging up in this stone archway or window. And yes, yeah, these have a, you know, beautiful blue and cloud, like white cloud sky. And then there's just little odd things like a butterfly and these shells. So it's a little bit surreal, pretty weird, quirky image, but yeah, just extremely beautiful as well. So this was a very tricky one to put together. Um, as you can probably see from the you know lots of grays and blues but i yeah really enjoyed it it was really cool love loved the end result looked absolutely stunning um so let's see the next brand uh we have is cloudberries i've just got a couple here from them um always enjoy a, a good cloudberries puzzle um so i picked up this one called daydream and i think both of these designs have been out for a little while again you can probably tell this one's quite me very much my vibe um and it's quite a surreal picture. It's got a lot of pretty pinks and peaches and purples and all sorts of colors, but yeah, very pinky, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what's going on. Like I said, it's quite surreal, a bit abstract, I guess, but you know, I can see things like windows, some swans, um, like a clam with an oyster. What else? A tree, uh, stairs, clouds. Yeah, there's all sorts of weird and strange abstract things going on but yeah it's really pretty and um, I've always just really liked the look of this image so I think it'll be a lovely one to put together as well and then the other one we have from Cloudberries is called Feast and it's quite a bit different to the other one I guess but it's still kind of a bit cute and whimsical I guess um, it's it's also very quite almost computerized or geometric I guess so it's got this red and white checkered tablecloth but everything's sort of almost like geometric simplistic line drawings like I guess yeah maybe that's what it is it's sort of everything nothing really has shadow or shading like I mean there's a bit of texture I guess on this cut up bread but it's all dots or things are just line work so it's sort of quite an interesting style but yeah it's basically like the name suggests it's a feast or it looks like a big picnic or something so I guess you're sort of looking down on a table and you've got what looks like, you know, well, there's a big lobster. We've got pastas, fish, um, salads, a steak and chips, maybe a pizza, some different cakes and things. Yeah, all sorts of different dishes going on. But yeah, it's quite a, again, a bit of a quirky, weird image. But yeah, I think it just looks cool. It's quite fun and a bit different. I've never really seen anything quite in this style before. So yeah, I thought it was just a really cool image. And then we've got one here from Ebu, and I haven't bought anything from Ebu for ages, uh, but they've recently put out a whole bunch of uh, new, I guess like a new collection, and this one really caught my eye. Um, so this one's called The Alchemist's Home, and it's 1,000 pieces. Um, and I forgot to mention, this one was actually gifted to me by Mind Connect, which is an Australian online store here, so thank you very much. I really like this one. Um, so this is... Basically, it's almost a bit like one of those cut open dolls houses. So you can see into this house, like all the rooms. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of detail in here. And even outside, there's all these trees and birds and things. But you can see each room sort of like a different type of room. There's like bedrooms, there's like a science lab, some sort of room with like maps and history. Um, 
what else like a plant or greenhouse room the lounge room uh yeah and then at first glance you're like oh there's people in every room doing stuff but then you realize that some of these people well some look like more modern and dress more in a more modern sense and then others you realize are wearing kind of old-fashioned clothing and are looking a little bit gray and also a little bit transparent so you realize ah oh, okay i think we've got a few ghosts in this house maybe it's a bit of a haunted house or yeah but it's it's a really like colorful and fun and uh, not, not a scary image even though there's ghosts here and the other interesting thing about this is I believe this is kind of like almost like a sequel uh, puzzle to another puzzle by Ibu so a previous puzzle that they've done is the I think it's called Alchemist's Cabinet something like that but it basically features uh, there's like a very like detailed little cabinet or shelving unit in this room down here with all these sort of little knickknacks and artifacts and things like that and i believe that the other puzzle which i do own but i can't quite remember everything has a lot of like things taken from this one or is this sort of shelf so yeah it's pretty cool so i um they're by the same artist which obviously makes sense but yeah i just really like it so much fun detail on this one so i'm really looking forward to doing this one hopefully soon as well so we've got two more from this stack don't worry we have plenty more stacks to go um, so these last two are from the brand The Positive Peace, which is a brand that's kind of new to me. I've never tried them before, but they're actually Australian and based right here in Sydney. So that's pretty cool. And they have some beautiful puzzles by like a range of different artists. Um, they feel very, feels very heavy and luxe and packaging looks very interesting. Um, anyway, this one is 1000 pieces and it says collection number two balance. So I didn't realize, but I guess there's different collections. Um, and this one's called Smoking Tigress and it's by the artist Sharon Choi. Um, and there's just a small image here, but then on the back, there's a big image and it does actually say there's a poster inside, which is even more awesome, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's just a beautiful image. Um, it's got this tiger or tigress, I guess, and it actually has a smoking pipe in its mouth and is smoking. Um, and yeah, it just looks like it, I guess it's out in the wilderness. It's, there's these beautiful like hills and I guess the sun's out and these beautiful sort of trees and flowers like uh, yeah it's really lovely I guess it looks I don't know what medium I mean it looks painted but I'm not sure if it's watercolor or or what but yeah it's lovely the colors and just the sort of design of it is just beautiful um, and I just thought it was kind of a bit of a interesting image a bit quirky but yeah I just think it's quite stunning so yeah I'm really excited to try out this brand and also Put together this beautiful image and then the other one from them is a 500 piece one and it's also from the same collection called balance um, it's called dying in japan and it's by the artist zaina mayat i apologize if i've said that incorrectly um, again the packaging looks very luxe so we've got the small image on the front and then a bigger one on the back uh, yeah this one comes with a poster as well and yeah this one's really cute also appeals to me because it's well, you know, looking, it's all about uh, Japanese food. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, it's got, it's kind of like a, I guess looking down on a table with a bit of a Japanese feast going on here. So we've got like tempura prawns, some sushi, um, some soba noodles, um, like other sashimi and sushi, onigiri, I guess like a ramen, a few other bits and pieces. But yeah, it's just the style that it's done in looks really nice. It's kind of a bit fun because the artist has put little sparkles, like little sparkle shine marks on some of the food. So it sort of brings a bit of whimsy to the image, I think, like it's makes it feel a little bit less serious. But yeah, I just think it's really quite bright and has quite a bit of detail. It too kind of looks painted as well. I'm not too sure on the medium, but yeah, really like it. I think it looks cool. I think this one will be a fun little one to do. The next three puzzles are ones I actually got from a Kickstarter, but it's by the brand Sunshine Puzzles and um, they're over on Instagram. They're just a small little puzzle company and I believe you can still actually buy these from them. So, you know, if you like them, you can go check them out. Um, so despite these boxes being very thin and, you know, sleek, um, they're all actually 1000 pieces and they all have a bit of a sort of 80s pop culture, pop art kind of feel. So this one's called Wild Cherry and um, the front, the picture's a little bit covered by the logo, but you do actually have the whole picture on the back. 
Uh, but yes, yeah, these sort of blocks of like very color blocky or different shapes, like triangles, sort of circles and stuff. But each one is filled with bright, colorful patterns. And this one's got all these cute little cherries. Uh, I quite like this one. It's very really pretty pinks and reds and stuff. But yeah, the others have just, I guess, kind of little abstract patterns and designs. Um, yeah, I just like all the different bold, fun colors. Um, I'm guessing like, because there's very like distinct sections, it'd probably be a pretty quick puzzle to put together. Um, yeah, but it just looks very cheery, very fun. Yeah, I, I like it, I think it's cool. And then the next one from them is Graphic Pastels. So it's a little bit more of a muted color scheme, but also quite sort of fun and a bit, feels a bit 80s, I guess. But yeah, it's also very geometric, it has these like circles and some line work and squares and things but yeah sort of the more muted like berry tones or mauve like purples pale purples and grays and things but yeah I quite like it it's kind of a bit abstract and interesting and again I feel like you know it's got these sort of simple uh, color block kind of shapes and patterns and things so I feel like it'd probably be kind of quick and easy to put together but I sort of feel like because there's no I guess distinct like you know, fussy image going on. You can just sort of maybe find some of these a little bit more meditative putting them together. So yeah, I think it could be quite relaxing doing these. And then the last one from them, um, possibly my favorite, I think, because it's just so bright and pastel and colorful. It's called Space Gum and this one feels very 80s. Um, again, it's quite abstract and has like bold sort of geometric shapes, circles and triangles and things, but it has a bit more like a more, I guess, less neat shapes going on, like this sort of crayony looking like lines or drawing drawings and these little bursts. But yeah, I love the colors of the pastel pink, bright yellows. Um, yeah, it's just so colorful. It's very, very me. So yeah, I really like this one. I think it looks really fun. And then what else do we have here? Okay, so we've got this one here, which is by an Australian company called Ruby Olive Online or their puzzles, they just call it Row & Co. And this is actually for, I got this in the previous month, uh, but I didn't show it in the last month's haul because um, I was actually doing like a review of this puzzle for them um, on my Instagram. So I sort of didn't want to show this puzzle until I sort of put it on Instagram. Um, so I'm including it in this month instead. Anyway, um, this one's called Wild Natives. It's 1000 pieces, kind of, doesn't show the full image on the front. It does have it inside and on the back. Um, but yeah, it's just really, uh, I, I had a lot of fun doing this. So I was really happy to review it because I think the artwork is beautiful. Basically it's very colorful, bright, uh, lovely, whimsical artwork. It features all these different sort of Australian like flora and fauna. So we've got, you know, cockatoos, kangaroos, echidnas, um, wombats, yeah, and other little, some of the little critters, flying fox. Yeah, different Australian creatures and like different like sort of native Australian plants and stuff. Um, and yeah, very like, I guess, bold imagery as well. But one of the things that I quite like about it is the image is actually created using like, it's a collage of hand painted paper. So um, probably you won't be able to tell here. Hopefully you might be able to see it in a bigger image up here. But yeah, it's just beautifully done and you can if you look closely, you can see sort of shadows that the layers of paper creates. But yeah, it's just lovely. And um, yeah, I really liked it. And I definitely am keen to get, there's a couple others, I think, by the same artist that they've got. So keen to try those as well. But yeah, very, very cute, uh, fun doing a sort of Australiana themed puzzle. And yeah, just really enjoyed it. And then this next one, I, let's see, it's sort of a, brand I've never heard of and I'm not sure it's like really a jigsaw puzzle brand but it's by the artist called I, I practiced this so let me think K Facet I think that's how you say it I looked it up because I was like how do I say this um, so the puzzle is called K Facet's Diamond Quilt and so I believe this person I guess creates quilts or quilt designs I'm not at all in the world of quilting never done one in my life but I really quite like some of the patterns you get from in quilting so I don't actually know really anything at all about this person but they have 
I guess they yeah create these beautiful quilts or quilt designs. So I'm just trying to work out like what. Okay, so this puzzle is by C and T Publishing. I've never heard of them before. I've never, as far as I know, done any puzzles by them. But I saw this one on Amazon, and I just thought it's really eye-catching um, and just a beautiful design. So yeah, it's 1,000 pieces, and yeah, I guess features their quilt, and it's just yeah, beautiful, stunning. Um, I guess fabric patterns like it's all these diamonds like the name of the quilt suggests but each one both the outside and inside of each diamond is all very detailed like floral most yeah mostly floral fabrics um, maybe even some Japanese sort of inspired ones but yeah it's very colorful very pretty so much little floral details um, but yeah I just thought it was a really beautiful image and yeah it's really pretty and colorful and then we've got three here from the brand uh, Recess. Um, so Recess, a US brand, and they have, um, I think like, they don't have too many puzzles, but the ones they do are sort of like, they seem to have collections by a couple different artists, but they're a bit more on the quirky, sort of, I guess, less serious, more fun side. So these three are all by, I don't know, oh, it's, I guess like two artists, Anna Miller and Ravi Zupa. I hope, hopefully I said that right. Um, they're all 500 pieces and they're all the same sort of, you can definitely tell they're a collection. So this, um, oh, well, okay. The collection name is called Drunk Cats. And so this one is called Time to Call It. And so they all kind of feel a bit, um, almost like a screen print or something. I don't know if it says it on the back. Um, block, oh, so they're wood block prints. Apparently it says, it started out as a set of miniature woodblock prints on matchboxes, okay, and then, um, oh, and then it's grown into an ongoing series of screen prints and, I guess, puzzles. So, yeah, that's sort of why I guess it has that sort of blocky print about it. So, very, uh, like, uh, minimal colors and quite, like, simplistic kind of design but yeah it's really cute they almost look like little posters or something and it says it was definitely time to call it a night and it's <laughs> this very like I guess drunk kind of worn out cat looks like it's a bit over it and looks like this little kitty is uh had a little bit too much to drink um I'm not sure a cat should be drinking at all maybe it's catnip juice I don't know but yes I think this kitty needs to call a cab and uh, get home and get into bed <laughs> But I just thought these are all really silly and fun and just a bit weird and cute. And then the next one is called uh, Reading. So it says, he wished he was at home reading. I, I can relate to this. <laughs> this is me when I go out, I'm like, why did I go out? I could just be at home watching TV, doing a jigsaw puzzle, hanging out with my cats reading. Um, so it looks like this poor cat's agreed reluctantly to go out with its friends and they're all having a great time drinking and this cat just looks a bit depressed and yeah I guess wishes they were at home uh, chilling and reading and curled up in their their kitty bed so poor thing yes definitely definitely can relate and then the last one from this series is called too intense <laughs> so and these are quite comical so, the, so this one says some people thought uh that he was too intense and it's this very like, I guess, intense, wild looking cat who's, you know, lighting a cigarette and has a drink here and yeah, I guess not afraid to go out and I guess have a good time. <laughs> I don't know, yeah, it's pretty weird. Um, uh, yeah, but I don't know, it's, it's weird, but it appeals to me. It's sort of my kind of thing, it's quirky. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure exactly what the piece qualities like of these but I mean they're just little 500 piece ones and pretty sort of simple designs and I think it'll still just be good fun to do them and then the last puzzle from this stack don't worry we still have some more to go um, this one is from Peter Popper Press um, and they have quite a range of puzzles and I've done one from them before this one's called House of Cats and so um, just by the name alone you could probably tell I needed this one um, but it's just this really cute image. Oh, it's 1,000 pieces. It's just this really cute image of all these cats. I guess whoever owns these cats is also really into plants because they've just got shelves of plants, plants hanging up. There's plants everywhere, but there's also cats everywhere. Um, there's cats on shelves, plants on shelves, cats playing with plants, uh, cats playing with cat toys. It's really cute. And 
yeah, I really like the art style. It's very like, again, I keep saying the word whimsical, but I feel like so many of these puzzles really are. Um, yeah, just really, really adorable. Um, I yeah love all the cats getting up to mischief. Yeah, one a lot of them are playing with little cat toys. One of them is playing with like one of the hanging plants. There's one having a little nap on the shelf here. One's looking out the window. Yeah, they're just really cute. Oh, and there's even a little, just noticed a little mouse hiding down here trying to probably stay safe, I guess. Um, and yeah, and all the plants look really cute. And like, I just, yeah, I like how they're all drawn and it's like a good mix of plants. So yeah, I think this one will be very cute to put together. We are finally up to our last stack of puzzles. So let's go through these last few brands. So I've got three here from Art and Fable and they're actually from their most recent uh, new release 1000 piece puzzles. So this first one is called Legend of the Jaguar Shaman by Nathan Miller. And I think this one is just absolutely stunning. Uh, it's just such a gorgeous, beautiful image. It definitely caught my eye straight away and I knew that I was gonna have to get a hold of this one. But yeah, there's just so much vibrant, rich colors, a beautiful use of like contrasting colors and I guess shades that so you got these dark green leaves in the background, but then these bright pops of yellows and lime greens and pops of red. And there's just so much detail and texture as well. Like you can see all the sort of like, I guess texture of the fur and all the feathers and then even some of the plants and also the sort of reptile and snake skin as well. Like it's just really detailed, um, but yeah, it's just absolutely stunning. And I love how like it's packed full of patterns and texture and color. Yeah, I've never really seen anything like it. I just, but it's just so eye catching and you just can't stop staring at it. So yeah, I think this is gonna be just look stunning when it's put together. And then the next one I got from Art and Fable uh, is called Aspic Hunt by John Rego, Rego? Oh, I'm not sure, I apologize. Uh, this one is also 1000 pieces and this one is very surreal and quite weird. It makes me, feels a bit dreamlike cause it's just, there's so many weird things going on here. Basically, I guess it's in a city or it's a cityscape cause you've got these actual buildings, but then wherever they are in the city, there's these giant towers of jelly with like different food in them, like sort of maybe some sweet jelly, but savory as well. Like this one's got like jellied eel and and pineapples and tomatoes and things. And well, I think that's a jelly eel as well. They don't look particularly delicious. It's not my kind of thing, but yeah, it's just such a weird image. Like why, why are there giant jelly towers? I don't know. And then there's people everywhere doing all sorts of things, climbing on the jelly towers, fighting each other, getting up to mischief. There's people riding giant white birds around. <laughs> it's all pretty weird. I don't really know what's going on, but I mean, I guess it's some sort of hunt because it does look like some of them have weapons or spears and things. And I guess they're using the birds to go hunting. Um, I'm not exactly sure what they're hunting each other. I don't know. And it also has like a very uh, ornate border around the image too, which has like more pictures of jelly and also seems to feature like this one particular character, which I'm not sure is maybe the artist themselves or a character they made up. I'm not sure, but yeah, very, Detailed, very intricate, beautifully painted or illustrated, and just completely weird. <laughs> and then the last one from Art and Fable is one that I've actually already done and I've really enjoyed this one. I did it as part of a puzzle along on Instagram. This, one, this one's called The Lost and Found by Eric Joyner. Also 1000 pieces. And uh, it's also pretty weird and quirky. Um, this artist really likes robots. And so in this image, you can see a robot family. Apparently they're walking to church. Uh, so it's like mum, dad, and the kids, and they're walking past this bakery, which apparently is a real bakery um, in New York. So that's pretty cool. And then we've also got like a, someone who's passed out drunk. Um, you know, it feels very city, I think. And a, you know, dog tied up to someone's balcony up there. And yeah, it looks very, feels like a New York street, I think. But yeah, the colors are really rich. It's bizarre subject matter, but I really like it. And the robots are very, it's got a very vintage feel and almost color palette, like this beautiful green and the um, robots are all that sort of like vintage, like old toy robot style. Um, yeah, it's really cool. It's just so bizarre and weird and different, but yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Um, it was a lot of fun to put together. It was a good mix of easy and hard, like some parts of the puzzle were quite easy to put together. Other parts are a bit more tricky, but 
yeah, definitely very enjoyable. And then what do we have next? Okay, I've got a couple here from Hay. So this one is 1000 pieces and it's part of a like series called Dreaming, but this particular one is called Black Kitty. And here it is here, it is a Black Kitty. And this was also given to me by the same friend that I mentioned before, so thank you very much. I absolutely love it, it's so cute. And yeah, it's just such a pretty, pretty kitty. It's just really cute, adorable. Um, yeah, I just, yeah, I love it. It's just very pretty and I love its little pink bow and it is very much like a dreaming, I guess. It sort of looks like a little dreamland with this pretty sky and stars and uh, yeah, it's just really adorable and just love the black cat and it's big sort of almost like anime eyes and, um, and then there's like some other cute details like, well, I just realized actually, so there's some butterflies here, but then I realized there's a butterfly here and it looks like the cat's actually squished it or caught it and is standing on it. So like, that's interesting. Maybe this cat, well, I guess all cats are very cute, but they're also a little bit cheeky and naughty too. So I'm guessing this cat has been up to no good, but it's looking very cute and innocent. It would never, you know, kill butterflies. But yeah, I think it's cute and I think it's gonna be really fun to do this one. And then I have another one from Hay, which is also very colorful and fun. So this one is 1000 pieces and it's called, what is it called? Well, it's by, first up, it's by John Bergerman, who has a whole series with Hay of uh, this style. And I think it's called Pens Are My Friends. I think that's like the collection. But this particular one is called Doodle Village. And yeah, it features, he's sort of known for these like cute, quirky little, monsters and characters like he does all these like very colorful weird little creatures and so this one's I guess they're his yeah doodles like little doodle drawing characters and yeah it's a I guess a village full of them and they're all very colorful and very silly and dopey looking um they all have funny little facial expressions some are sort of like objects and things like there's some that are like little pizza monsters and hamburger monsters um, others that look kind of a bit more like aliens, um, others that look like dogs and animals, but it's a whole mix of like weird, funny little shaped, colorful critters. So yeah, very, very detailed as well, but yeah, it looks really fun. I think it's really cute. Um, yeah, I really like this one. And then what else have we got? Uh, ah, ah, okay. We've got a couple here from the... Canadian brand Jacaroo. Um, and this one is 1000 pieces and it is called Color Frenzy and it's by the artist Annie Maltese. I think that's how you say it. Um, and you can probably tell this is very much my kind of image as well. It's just a beautifully patterned and colorful, uh, I guess, uh, kind of, yeah, it's not, not exactly abstract, but it's not like it's just these, I guess, circles of different patterns, like almost like mandalas or something. Um, oh, and it's a color frenzy. <laughs> but yeah, it's just these, yeah, circles of sort of different shapes and patterns. Some are sort of a bit floral, some are a bit more geometric. And then the background sort of filled with more colorful sort of rainbow circles. And yeah, just really pretty, colorful, looks cool. I don't know, I just liked it. I thought it was just a fun image. Um, again, I think this one could be quite meditative because it's like nothing, it's not really an image of anything in particular. It's just sort of patterns and colors. So I think, you know, you could just relax and sort of meditate a bit as you put this one together. And then the other one I grabbed from them is actually a 500 piece one. And I don't think I've done a 500 piece one from them. So it'd be interesting to sort of compare the pieces, I guess, see how different they are. Um, this is called, okay, so this is called Baba Papa. And it's also, oh no, it's by a different artists, by Amory. Hmm, how do I say this? Boisvert? I apologize. Um, and this is quite a different image. It features this very intense, possibly cranky looking bird, which I guess is the Baba Papa. And I, I love the colors, like its feathers are these, you know, beautiful berry tones and bright greens and blues. So it looks beautiful, but yes, it looks a bit like, what are you doing in my territory? It looks a bit cranky. And then the background sort of just all these painty smudgy pretty colors and bits of like diamond pattern and swirly things like yeah you can actually really see now that i look at it you can actually really see a lot of their sort of paint texture and strokes in it so yeah it's pretty cool it's like 
very beautiful, lovely colors. Pretty weird image. I feel like there's a lot of really weird images in this haul. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was quite a beautiful image, um, regardless of how angry this bird looks and thought it'd be a nice one to do. And then we are down to our last two puzzles for this haul. Um, so these two are both from Ravensburger. And this one is 1500 pieces and it is called uh, Shoal. And it's by the artist Adam Parsons, who I've sort of, uh, thanks to a friend on Instagram who was doing this puzzle, I've discovered this artist and the artwork and I should probably show you the image. So I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see all the detail in this, even in a big image up here, because it is just packed, absolutely filled with tiny weeny intricate details but basically it's called shoal um, I didn't actually know what shoal meant and so I had to look it up and it is like sort of a group or not exactly a school of fish but I guess like this whole group or cluster of different fish I think I'm not sure if that's the exact definition but something to do with lots of fish and that's pretty much what this image is it's jam-packed uh, like it's an underwater scene so it's mostly fish but there is like a whale um, there's you know some octopus jellyfish it's all different sea creatures but there's a lot a lot of fish and all different types and they're very colorful um and they're just yeah it's it's packed filled to the brim with fishies but yeah they're really cute some of them are a little bit comical looking and um yeah if you look up this artist on instagram actually you can see him working on his next illustration which i think is going to be a puzzle too i hope so because it looks beautiful um but yeah it's just amazing seeing him work and um, he just like hand like colors them all in by hand and it's very like time consuming but I mean absolutely worth it because this is stunning so uh, from what I heard from my friend who was doing this puzzle it is quite a tricky one because there's just so much going on and it's yeah it is difficult but it yeah looked looked beautiful when it was done so definitely looking forward to this one I think it's going to be fun and probably a bit challenging and then kind of the opposite side of things but also from Ravensburger is this little 200 piece one um, called I think it's just it's well it's part of the puzzle moment sort of series they have where I guess it's sort of uh, encouraging mindfulness it says relax enjoy me time so it's just a cute little mini well it's not mini but smaller piece count that you could sort of do in your lunch break or something like that I guess um, so I think it's just called are you just called mixtape? Yes, it's called mixtape and yeah, 200 pieces. Um, it only has part of the image on the front. It does have the full image on the back, but you should see it on the screen here. But yeah, it's just um, this sort of colorful gradient background uh, overlaid with all these like mixtapes. And I think, yeah, they look like they're photos actually. So they're all like tapes from the 80s and 90s, I guess. Um, and cut, they've managed to find all these different colorful cassette tapes, so it's pretty cool. And yeah, just laid them all out. And then there's one big one in the middle that says mixtape on it. But I just thought it was fun, a bit nostalgic, because in high school I used to make my own mixtapes for my Walkman, which yeah, a hand-me-down Walkman that I got from a cousin. And yeah, I thought I was pretty cool with my headphones in and listening to my cool music, but I probably wasn't cool at all. But it was a lot of fun, you know just making up your own tapes with all your favorite songs on them. So yeah, quite uh, quite nostalgic, but also I really like how, yeah, really colorful this manages to be somehow, even though they're just tapes. So yeah, I think this will be a fun one to do. That's all the puzzles for the month of August. I think that might've been one of the biggest puzzle hauls we've done on this channel. Uh, there was a really great mix of puzzles though, lots of beautiful different art styles. And, you know, I got to discover some new artists whose artwork I absolutely love. Uh, of course, there were lots of very colorful, uh, bright and cheerful puzzles. There's some uh, cat puzzles in there for good measure. And there were also uh, a lot of weird, quirky and surreal puzzles too. So in the comments below, let me know what you thought of this haul. Were there any here that you also picked up or let me know what puzzles you did get. And, you know, let me know which ones were your favorites and are there any here that you've popped onto your wish list. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you show that like button some love. And for more videos like this and for even more puzzle content, then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. By subscribing, not only will you be the first to know when a new video is released, but you're also helping this channel grow. And you can find me over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.